we are continuing our Altec E5 uh, journey and uh, the previous episode I uh, introduced what the the diverse A5 uh, incarnations are and what those uh, speakers uh, or those DIY speakers or, or famous speakers in audio circles that were inspired by the original A5 what they are and uh, how they impact on uh, on us on, on, on the DIY community on, and on what we think about sound and now uh, here we will look at a concrete example so I will show you some specifics first and we'll go and look at uh, John Stronser's uh, A5 what he did with it with John Hiraga's help so this is the 820H 8H <laughs> cabinet so 828H and uh, this uh, I got this thing and uh, and the design for that I mean the, the the parameters from Great Plains Audio website so so Great Plains Audio is that company who who took over the tooling and the machinery to make the these Altec drivers so 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 this thing even though it was introduced in uh, 1945 it's not something of the past and you are not buying something obsolete and if you blow your drivers or, or your son pokes your driver through with a screwdriver it's not the end of the world GPA they, they can recon them for you if, if, if your son goes there with a, with a powerful electromagnet maybe he's a little Einstein little genius and he demagnetizes your Alnico magnet they can remagnetize it for you and, and they, they do have a new uh, diaphragms for the compression driver and so on and uh, and they also uh, they can refurbish your old drivers and and they can also provide you with new drivers so so that's fantastic and they are super helpful and uh, and really um, helpful <laughs> so anyway with with no more further ado so the a28h version cabinet uh, th there's minor versions between uh, the A28 uh, cabinets, but for these specifically, it's it's provided for the 51516G driver. So it means that 515 is the series, 516 se so it's the same basket, same uh, cone material, same uh, suspension. Uh, so basically, it's the same driver and 16 means that it's the 16 ohm version because there is 8 ohm and 16 ohm version and the G means it's the G series so so it's 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 the latest series that that Green Plain that the Great Plains audio uh, came up with it's it's their new uh, design and 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 using that driver this cabinet will give you a hundred and five dB per watt per meter efficiency that's extremely high and and that's like really 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 high and that's not a fake number it's not not a boosted sensitivity <laughs> it's an actually actual figure so when you see a speakers a pair of speakers and they are advertised as 100 db it's most probably just 95 or maybe 96 or they say oh we have like 110 dB efficient maybe it's 102 in, in real life but but this this is it, it, it's really 105 uh, and and the dimensions of it is like 107 centimeters tall so that's three and a half feet tall 76 centimeters wide two and a half feet wide and 61 centimeters deep almost two feet deep so how big is that so so the cabinet itself and plus we will have the horn sitting on top of the cabinet so that's plus <laughs> to the size of the a5 but the the a5 cabinet itself occupies a total of 500 liters of airspace 
from your living room. So it's a 500, half a thousand liters of water. So if, if we would fill it with water, it would be 1100 pounds of water sitting in your living room. It's huge. So uh, normally in the audio world, we think of a 100 liter cabinet uh, as a, like a three cubic feet cabinet as something like a really big speakers now this is five times that size so it, it's it's really gargantuan and uh, when we look at the frequency range so GPA tells us that it uh, it works from uh, down to 35 Hertz and uh, and and the the 35 Hertz to 120 Hertz is supported by the base reflex part of the cabinet so here i have there's a grill here which covers what's behind but here i i get this someone at i think diy audio forum made this drawing and i just uh, grabbed it quickly and uh, here you can see this is how it looks like without the grill that there are two slot ports in the for in the front and and here this area right there and behind what what you see behind here uh, that's that's the enclosure itself and that's that's uh, that's the base reflex cabinet and and what you see here that that front horn in front of the driver this is the front horn itself so the front horn works from 120 hertz up adds to the front output of the driver of the 515 so it amplifies its uh, volume uh, quite a bit from uh, 120 hertz up until the point where you uh, where the driver uh, dies down with crossing over so eventually the driver here in this cabinet goes so it's crossed at 500 hertz it means that at 500 hertz it's already 3 db down so and and if you cross it over second order then it means that at 1 kilohertz you will be already 15 db down from the peak output of your driver so th these cabinets actually easily work to to about a kilohertz which is defined by by the the slot and by the opening of the throat of the horn it works up to about a kilohertz and that's where it has to work because at one kilohertz the 288 already have taken over the show a long long time ago so so when you cross over at 500 hertz these two drivers then uh, until 500 basically the Altec dominates or I would say until 400 Hertz you purely hear the bass unit and then 400 Hertz uh, you start to hear a little bit from the the compression driver but the tiniest tiniest bit it, it really starts to get louder from uh, 500 Hertz up and then by 600 Hertz 700 the uh, the compression driver has taken over the show almost completely so so basically for the high frequencies we have the horn which sits on the top and fed by the 288 doing the show and then between 500 hertz to 120 it's the front horn of the woofer doing the show and then below 120 hertz it's the slot ports taking over and and the base reflex cabinet taking over down to 35 hertz and uh, when you look at it it this uh, base reflex cabinet compartment has 265 liters of free air volume so that is the air volume and air mass that the driver has to work with and it's tuned to 50 hertz and, and we can punch in these numbers into uh, the modeling software into Win ISD and, 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 and Great Plains Audio also made uh, uh, accessible the TLS more parameters of their drivers so I can punch everything in 
and we can use that to model the cabinet so so I, I did that thing and I modeled the cabinet how it behaves and we will look at it later on and break it down what it really does because when you look at the original 828 uh, design they say that it works from 40 hertz to 150 hertz as a base reflex cabinet and then from 150 to 500 hertz up as a front loading horn and they give 100 db per watt meter efficiency which is 5 db less so what is going on because apparently there is a big discrepancy between these two values but uh, but even the original 828 it, it's virtually the same cabinet just a few centimeters few inches off but it's not enough to warrant any any sort of uh, differences like uh, like this we have between these two numbers so so let's look at at the reality at the physics behind the uh, the frequencies and the numbers so when you look at at the cabinet uh, you see that the width of the front horn is 76 centimeters so it means that the half wave frequency it can support so when the so sound wave is coming out the half wave will be of this size from one end of the cabinet to the other end of cabinet and that will correspond to the half wave of the lowest frequency that the cabinet can support with 100% efficiency so if we would draw down the representation of that sound wave it will lo would look like this like half and like that like and then you can see that it, it's like a sine wave right and you have the one go going here and the other half going there and when you measure from here to here what is the length of that and you change it over to uh, what frequency that is you get that when you look at uh, 20 uh, degrees celsius room temperature which is like a normal uh, cool room temperature at, uh, at 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 sea level at normal humidity that corresponds to 226 hertz if you live higher up lower up humidity changes da 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 temperature changes then the exact value will change and this is the reason why uh, musicians have to tune their instruments because depending on the temperature and altitude the the sound waves that a, a tuned object has changes because because this because the this uh, the wave carrying capacity of the air is different based on these parameters so so the frequency that it can support is roughly 226 hertz it can go higher with a few hertz or go lower with a few hertz depending on your room temperature whether it's summer winter is there a storm coming not coming and that's part uh, one of the reasons why the audiophiles are so and also the musicians are so frustrated with our sound systems and uh, music instruments because depending on the weather they change tuning so that's why in some days your speakers sound wonderful and perfect because that's when they they uh, they are tuned perfectly and then there are other days when it sounds like crap because the tuning is far away tuning that, that they receive from the air from the actual conditions is very different from what is the optimal tuning for the cabinet and uh, when we go higher in frequencies if if there's a sh shorter wave that needs to be reproduced let's use a different color maybe just a wave that corresponds to, to this size the the cabinet can support it and the shortest wave that it can support is the width of the throat and that that's around one kilohertz or so maybe 1.5 kilohertz i have not calculated it but it's somewhere between one and two kilohertz and uh uh, it, it's 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 rather closer to a kilohertz maybe a 1.2 1.5 kilohertz tops uh, however if we want to go higher 
I mean uh, lower in frequency and higher in wavelength or longer <laughs> in wavelength then if you if you think about this long wave there is no cabinet behind it anymore so a wave with that wavelength let's use a, a green color it starts to wrap around the cabinet you see so instead of coming from the sides and projecting to you it will start to wrap around the cabinet so it means that it will start to lose its efficiency so it means that there is no not that much pressure behind it so imagine uh, the Tokyo subway that people are trying to board the subway and there are those people who are pushing those people into the trains so that they can board <laughs> in the short time allowed and and imagine that uh, uh, that there's only people who are pushing those people for for like only three cars and then when they add two additional cars then to the train then uh, there's not enough people to push them so there those people cannot board the train so so that's what happens with sound waves that are bigger than the front of the speaker they start to wrap around it and uh, but still it, it, it's capable of producing a, a, a sound but of lower and lower efficiency because as the sound waves becomes more and more then more and more of that sound wave is wrapped around the side and then it starts to wrap around the back of the speaker and then we reach a point when it wraps around the entire speaker and if it goes beyond that point then it starts to cancel each, uh, itself so it means how it really works out in life that uh, we still have amplification down to a half of that frequency which is roughly which is exactly 113 hertz but when you look at great plains audio's recommendation that they they say 120 hertz this is in that ballpark so so gpa if they wanted they could say okay the 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 front uh, baffle the front horn supports down to 113 hertz the output and and they would be still correct they are cons they are a little conservative that of saying 120 hertz but that that's fine that's really nice it's nice of them because there is a lot of manufacturers who would go the other way and they say oh it goes down to 100 hertz while it doesn't go um, it goes exactly down to 113 hertz it depending on the weather sometimes it, it does work out to be 115 maybe in extreme conditions 120 hertz if you live like really high up in the mountain uh, but it can go down to maybe 105 hertz anyway uh, but but it's 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 a it's a it's a good estimate and when we look at the old specification that was specified for the first versions of the same cabinet they give 150 hertz and and they give that because at 150 hertz i think there is a still a certain amount of efficiency that the front horn adds that is still a significant amount and not much lower than what you get at 230 hertz at at 113 hertz you already get noticeably lower effect from the front horn so so both of those really i would say they are accurate but they they work with uh, different uh, approximations and ultimately what is the real front horn capacity of them will work out in how you place them in your living room so you can place them uh, use the side walls in a way that uh, to make them make the front horn work to lower than 100 hertz or you can place them in, in a way that, that really uh, they start uh, having problems below 150 hertz. It's really up to you. But, uh, but what uh, the original design said that 150, it's more applicable in a theater setting. When you put it behind the movie screen, 
and there is the service area service room behind it so you do not have side walls uh, backing up the efficiency and it's far away from the rear wall while with the GPA's recommendations uh, they go if you are using it in your living room and then you have the back wall and side wall and in that case in that scenario that will also help your low frequency so yes in your living room even if it's a huge cafeteria size living room they will go down to 35 hertz instead of 40 hertz in a movie theater so let's see and now after this technical introduction uh, let's go into uh, John Stronser's uh, uh, writing in sound practices so this was one of the first issues of sound practices if if you are a new audiophile you might know sound practices from the from the current online version of sound practices which is a very modern forum and uh, and they have very uh, modern uh, articles and they look at audio very similarly as how the stereophile reviewers look at them or the absolute sound reviewers look at them or any other very popular media looks at them so it's it's really become uh, i would say a mainstream forum but with different uh, editors different people running the show and they have a different taste than the stereophile crew has but they essentially use the same approximation as they do so they they use uh, mostly mainly uh, commercial systems and they then they put these commercial systems together uh, the only difference from stereophile is that they use less known manufacturers so it's it's more more of a human touch type of thing than stereophile because it supports our local manufacturers and <laughs> other local I mean in the US United States because it's a United States forum uh, so so it's more of a thing that that you can really experience here what other audiophiles think and do who 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 were in your shoes who grew up as a, as a as a sound lover as a music lover and then they decided to go into audio business to to market those ideas that they come up with so here I want to really emphasize the fact that there is no huge distinction between DIY do-it-yourself audio and commercial audio because every commercial audio system audio product was DIY at one point the only difference is that those people who made it commercial made that choice that they start to market their ideas and those who who continue in DIYing they think that okay I, I will just hang on to my daytime job and and I will build it for myself and and I hang out with my audio buddies and they, if they ask me uh, my help I will help them I will look at their system we exchange ideas it's a totally free forum and when you go into commercial production then you get to play around with it uh, I would say more and less at the same time because then you are in uh, to you have the constraint that first of all you have to work around patents so you you cannot use any idea that, that you have in uh, that just pops into your mind because you have to look around if someone already patented it then uh, then your hands are tied together you cannot proceed and the other thing you cannot build whatever you want to listen to or whatever you think it's the best you have to build whatever there is a customer basis for you have to build it to a certain price point to make it as a viable product so if you are really serious into audio then staying a DIYer offers a huge huge advantage as far as developing your system at home if you are a DIYer you have the, re the time and resources to build a much better system for yourself if you are a commercial if you step over to become a commercial manufacturer 
then you will have the choice, you made the choice to potentially improve people's systems and those systems where people do not have the time, the effort to put into think it through thoroughly and those scenarios you are helping there and and John Stronser was uh, was uh, coming he actually he he's into the commercial side he's of the Belcanto design but uh, but besides designing his amps and doing his things he he also retained his uh, DIYer streak and and he heard uh, Jean Hiraga's A5 and he was so inspired that that he wanted to uh, build his own version and he did it uh, to try out with his amps and and now we will have a, an analysis of uh, of his uh, sound practices uh, article that that he wrote for sound practices and and I have to say that the sound practices that he wrote this for I think this issue was in in uh, 1992 it's the issue number 11 and uh, and at that time sound practices was a completely different forum it was all about DIY so this was the time when basically I started getting into audio and, and the early issues and back issues uh, they were for me almost like an audio bible uh, well the uh, the Radiotron designers handbook the Langford Smith that was the <laughs> the bible for DIYers and it is until today even today if you are into tube amplification but but all the back issues of sound practices they were the ones that 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 really gave us the feedback what people are doing what is out there which are the directions toward which I can grow which will yield of really fantastic results and, and you will not be disappointed uh, no matter what you chose from sound practices they, they, they really had really fantastic designs so I, I was really excited about that so so with that in mind let's let's have a look and now we'll switch into uh, stereo file reviewer mode and we'll review the review okay so so here he, he uh, John uh, introduces it that he heard uh, Jean Hiraga's uh, uh, system uh, with, with an 845 single ended amp so the 845 is one of the beefiest uh, triodes it, it, it's a transmitting triode it means that it was designed for radio stations so it, it's, it's a power tube for a small radio station and depending on the high voltage that you are applying to it it can put out anything from 20 watts up to about 80 watts 100 watts if you if you really 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 push it beyond you know capacity but in realistically depending on the high voltage between 20 to 40 watts that's realistic and we are talking about between 1000 volts to 2500 volts of B plus so, so the, the 2500 is really pushing in 1 kilovolt is, is really usable and at 1 kilovolt you can get 20 watts in triode mode out of these transmitting tubes so, so that, that's a lot of power in class A triode mode and and he tried out these incredibly efficient speakers with with an amp that can really deliver a lot of current for a triode amp and a lot of power and uh, and then he said that that it, it was a big experience for him and compared to his reference system at that time it was immediately a big change and and that's that was my experience too when anytime i hear an altex system then uh, it's it's really uh, a huge uh, huge difference between anything else really it has uh, all the Altex every single one I heard have, have a very different sound from each other but all of them give you a sound that that uh, that 
you will say it's a live sound. No matter what incarnation I, I'm listening to, it's live music. And when I'm listening to any other design, you hear recorded music. Yep, it's more controlled when it's coming from a recording, but I say, ah, this is coming from a stereo, and it reminds me of a stereo, and I just, uh, you know, lean back in my chair, and, and I'm in an audiophile mode and whatever. Now, the company of my audio buddies is more, really more important than, than what we are listening to. And, and when you listen to an attack, the conversation suddenly changes. It's not about transparency and dynamics, but everyone starts to talk about the music that, that you are listening to. And, and we connect to the music right away. And if you are a musician, you get inspired, you get ideas. Ooh, how, what did he do with the drums? Or, or how you, you can almost like feel the techniques that they used to play the violin and, and things like that. It, it's like you get like oozes of inspiration out of these art acts. So that's, that's my experience. And, and then what's John's experience? He said that no, they aren't perfect although I'm not certain if any of the weaknesses are the result of other system components or the recording or the speakers. And I completely agree with him on this, that indeed, when you swap other speakers for these, you can hear lots of defects and, 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 and to the past uh, a version of John <laughs> in, when he played around with the, his A5s, I can tell to him into the past that my experience is that more than often the weaknesses you hear is not of the speakers, but the rest of the chain. And, and it's because they allow you to hear so much more into the music that whatever problems your system had that were hidden. Now they are revealed, they brought into the daylight. So it's kind of like they open up the door of the music for you. And, 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 and you see more sunlight coming, but with more sunlight, the shadows become stronger as well. So it's a double effect. So as you are getting more of the music, you are getting more of how the rest of the system colors your sound and also how your room contributes to your sound. You get everything more. And of course, you also get much more of what your crossover does to the sound. That's why if you do the minutest changes to the crossover, the, the changes in sound can be tremendous. And if you have the same, like similar crossover parts for a low sensitivity speaker. For example, you have the same 10 ohms resistor in your crossover part. If you change that 10 ohms resistor to, let's say, another 10 ohms resistor, but a different manufacturer, let's say, like a, a, a ceramic uh, resistor to, let's say, a Dale film resistor, then with a, with a normal speaker, a low efficiency speaker, you hear a yeah, little bit of difference, but maybe, you know, it, it, it's just me, maybe I'm hallucinating. Half of your audio bodies can't hear the difference. Golden ears can tell the difference. Some like it better, some not, whatnot. But if you do the same change with, with the A5s, then the difference is really almost night and day. And every single one of the listeners will be able to tell that, oh, this is a huge difference. And, and, and there's almost no shadow of a doubt that everyone prefers, okay, that, that's the way to go. So they really tell you that if, if something is amiss, you are going to get that. And that's because they can reveal uh, from the same amount of signal that's fed to the speakers, they will play about 10 to 50 times more music. So, so they, they resolve much more the information that is fed for them. And that's why uh, people are accusing 
horn speakers of, of having a lot of distortion because you they allow you to hear your system's problems but when you have a, a system that it's put on like Jeff's uh, Artex he he has a system that that is, is really really highly done really passionately put together with really uh, fine components and there you do not have any uh, the slightest issues that people uh, associate with horns and horse sound is is just fantastic. And uh, let's see what what else he tells about them. Uh, sure, they aren't perfect. What is? But they are so much better than any alternatives, and they play music so convincingly that I just don't notice or care about weaknesses. Yes this is what you experience is that uh, sure that you will hear shortcomings and and as as he said you hear shortcomings with every system but with other speakers you are focused on the shortcomings and your brain is is caught in a monkey loop to how i can work around those shortcomings and when you listen to a5s or a5 incarnates then you don't care about that because your mind focuses on the music. And I would say, uh, no matter what kind of system you have, the most important part really is system synergy. So even if you have a low sensitivity speakers, do not feel bad about it. Because if you have set up them up in such a way that when you turn them on, you hear music coming out of it and you tremendously enjoy listening to music then then don't think about changing that and, and go for something else even for these artex or whatnot because just stay with them because they bring them joy and if you start meddling with your system changing big things you are probably in for a very long road before you can also settle to that level of uh, satisfaction that you have now. This is something uh, to play around with, I mean the Artex, that if you have your, your source, whether it's digital or analog, and your amplification spot on, only then, and your cablings and your room, only then go into high efficiency road. Because if you make the, the jump faster, then you are not ready for it yet. Okay, so next thing, uh, this is how his A5s look from the front. So you see that's here, this is the front horn. Uh, that's the 515 driver sitting at the, at the throat of the front horn. And then he put his crossover out here. And that's the 1505B a big horn and and the 288 compression driver is behind this if we cannot see it from this point so blah, 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 properly set up 85 system can make one forget about the little audio file worries and just listen becoming engaged with the music with all of these artists that's that's what i get to is that uh Really, since I, 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 I built my version of the Altex, I, I really have to almost uh, force myself to, to do any kind of tuning or, or tweaking on my stereo because I rather want to listen to music. And if I do some tweaking, I'm missing out time listening to them. And I'm at a point where I want the music more than the satisfaction that comes from tweaking and improving. And, and I think this is what every audiophile needs. And this is how you know whether you have a good system or not. Because if when you listen to music and your urge is to tweak it and change it, then, then you are not connecting with the music. You are connecting with your urges to buy new components and change stuff. It, it means you are not happy. But when it's the other way around, you, you, you want more uh, time with the music, uh, 
and uh, honestly I just now just tweak it and then go ahead because I'm, I'm curious and, and it's kind of like I've been doing that forever now and I just never want to stop but but honestly I have zero pressure to do it and if I would have to stop tweaking and just listen to music I would be just as happy as I am so what else uh, does he say? The source can be CD, LP, radio, or even an old cassette. You will still hear more of the music and the musician than you have ever before. And I think this is probably the greatest thing about these speakers, is that you can use any source. I also have cassette tape, CD, LP, YouTube, whatnot, Netflix, and I throw everything at the Altex, so I also have the home theater because set up uh, running through the, the stereo system, the two-channel stereo system. I do not have extra surround speakers. And, and it, it sounds better than ever before with any kind of true surround with a, a million weenies and wonkies attached. And... Uh, and and this is the exact opposite of what we think about as high-end today, that if you have a true high-end system, it can only play really high-end recordings. And, and if you happen to uh, have a favorite album or favorite group, well, you are out of luck, because you have to buy album X, which has been recorded in a 2 trillion bit format with a... a, a 16th level DSP in a 200 bit depth and 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 everything else that you put on you you can't even tolerate it for more than a minute or so and and it will be a terrible nightmare experience and 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 the Altec experience about the exact opposite uh, when when I have my videos I have some icons you know with a uh, with some uh, records like Mark Kuczynski's uh, Chopin waltzes which is an angel recording and if you put it on a modern high-end system the sound quality will be such that it's unbearable to listen to it and if I put it on and listen to them with uh, my Altex it's astounding it's, it's one of the best piano recordings that you can find and, and certainly Mark Kuczynski he is one of the most amazing Chopin interpreters from the Polish school. He, his, his playing is, is just fantastic. So if you are a pianist, you really want to hear him play. It's, it's just a fantastic inspiration. And, uh, and if you do not have uh, a system which can play that, then you're out of luck. Ding! Uh, and, and it, it can play that and, and everything else. So, so uh, I have tons and tons of angel recordings. And, and at one point of my life, I, I was really desperate because angel has about 90% 90, 90 of my favorite music in, in their repertoire. And, and, you know, I cannot listen to my favorite music. I'm screwed. But not anymore. I'm back in music heaven and 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 that's what happens to everyone not just me but to john stronger to jeff and to tom and everyone who has altex in their life so overall they are good enough to make other familiar systems seem dead and hmm? yeah <laughs> I would have written probably the same thing too. <laughs> but I, I would also add to that that every speaker has its own personality. And unfortunately today, in, uh, high-end audio uh, reviews gave us the impression that there is the cream of high-end, the best is best. You have to go for the ultimate speakers. And when you get the ultimate, ha, we just came up with ultimate level 2, which cost twice as much. And now ultimate is not good enough anymore. You have to go to ultimate level two because if you don't go there, that's not the best and you should be crying and weeping. Yeah. And, and I think that not, not just those uh, equipment, but that type of mentality is the dead end. And all, every speaker is like a music instrument. They have their own voicing. 
their own character, their own charisma, and uh, they, they bring themselves into the presentation. And if you are blind enough to pretend that that doesn't exist, there's just the mic feed, and I want to hear the mic feed as it is, it's, it's absolute hogwash. And, and, and it's just about chasing, chasing that. However, uh, yeah, so if whatever speakers you have, you can get the most out of them. But, but I do agree that, that uh, every other technology is, 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 is really seems handicapped compared to the, these high efficiency ITEX. And um, bo, bo, bo. Uh, living with or customized version of the classic A5 voice of the theater system, we have concluded that it would be just about impossible to get back to a normal type of loudspeaker. Yeah, I wouldn't go back either. Yeah, I agree with that. And and here he also said that uh, like a customized version of the classic A5 because I have a story that someone had a original A5 unmodified and and he he didn't like it and he, and he changed it for a, a modern high-end system uh, of a much lesser grade and he was more happy with that. But then when that exact same speakers were, the crossover was changed and, and tuned, then it became like exponentially better. Then it, it almost even didn't even resemble the, the original unmodified crossover version. So that's why if you go into the A5 route, the crossover and then the implementation is of a paramount importance because as in every case, the, the speaker drivers and the cabinets, they make up for maybe 20% of the sound, or I would say 10% of the sound, but the crossover, that's what adds 80 to 90% of the sound. And, and for as the higher efficiency you go, the more the crossover and the crossover parts quality will count, the more you can hear it. So da, 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 we can just jump over these. Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, here this this is an important bit. So he says that uh, John, Jean Hiraga recommends that uh, if you use the Altex in a small room, which is <laughs> which is like a huge living room or a normal living room, then you don't need to add an extra compression driver to extend the frequency beyond 20 kilohertz plus. You need that if you have a movie theater. Yes, there you want to add an extra uh, extra tweeter to co cover the, the super high frequencies above 17 kilohertz. Otherwise, they will sound relatively muted in a 400 seat theater. But if it's in your living room, they go high enough that you will be happier with them without a tweeter than by adding uh, something extra that gives the response to uh, 17 plus kilohertz. I will not get into why. We'll have a separate episode specifically on that. And let's conclude with uh, with the Artec woofers, what the woofers are that, that people play around with the F in the A5 and, and similar cabinets. And uh, this is like the original specifications for them, but they are given not per watt meter, but per watt per four feet. So now I'm converting the efficiency to dB per watt meter, and you will see it's considerably higher than the numbers in the spec sheet. So when you when you look at the baby brother, the 406B, uh, that's, that's specified at 96 dB at 4 feet per 1 watt, it's 97.7 dB per watt meter. So it's almost 98 dB. So almost plus 2 dB you can add to those numbers. And, uh, and it uses uh, Alnikov 5 magnet and, and the strength of it is the magnetic strength of the motor 
is 11,000 Gauss. So that's 1.1 Tesla. So that, that's pretty strong, but but it's uh, it's not really any any especially strong by our standards. But if you count, factor in that there is a two inch diameter voice coil, so it means that that magnetic strength is not just uh, maintained for like a tiny beryllium tweeter size area, but it's maintained for a, a two inch diameter huge area. So it requires a pretty big motor with, with a, almost two pounds weight of uh, alnico magnet. So that's a pretty darn strong motor. And uh, and when we and and it it's rated for 15 watts of power. You, know, you think that's not much considering today we have like a, a thousand watt high excursion woofer, but this is peanuts. But but look at that, like 97 dB at 15 watts that. You, you are getting over 110 dB sound pressure from the driver. That, that, that's more than anyone needs in, in their living room, really, without compression, right? 110 dB, that, that's, that's a lot. When we go for the bigger brother, 414A, I can't read, uh, efficiency is already above 100 dB per wattmeter. And, and here, uh, the the strength of the mag of the motor is a little bit lower because we went for a, a three inch diameter voice coil, so like a, an even bigger voice coil, but roughly the same size of motor, and and that translates to the the average magnetic strength being a little bit less compared to the baby brother where those magnetic lines that were fed by the same amount of magnet they they are more dense in in a smaller area for a two inch diameter area compared to expanding it to a three inch diameter area so that's how the physics of, of motor uh, engineering works out and 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 as a result of that the cone resonance so the self resonance of the driver for the 406b is a little bit lower uh, 28 hertz compared to the 30 hertz of the bigger brother and and here and you also see that the frequency range the 406 is specified working down to 25 hertz and the, this one the bigger one is specified to work down to 30 hertz so it's more efficient but it plays higher the other one is less efficient but it plays lower so and then and that's that's here it says like 12 inch diameter driver so people really like that driver a lot to play around with that and uh, and the bigger brother that's the 416a uh no, not the 414 but 16 that that has approximately the same efficiency actually the exact same efficiency but it plays much lower so almost uh, an, almost an octave lower so instead of 30 hertz to 4k it goes 20 hertz to 1.6k so 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 your for your tweeter you have to cross over your tweeter an octave lower compared to the other driver and here the self resonance drops to a whopping 25 hertz and then you have also a, a th three inch uh, diameter voice coil but the the magnet size is increased and because of that the the strength of the of the magnetic uh, circuit is also increased to 12 kilogos 1.2 tesla and that allows uh, this this spl to go down to 20 hertz but actually, it's 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 not not true. It it's not the exact same SPL at all of the frequency ranges. It's that SPL that is. Uh, I would say that that we, we can get down to about two hundred hertz or so. And and let's see our last one for today. That's the five fifteen B. The five fifteen C will be similar. So this is the big brother, and the efficiency for for these is almost 105 watt per i mean <laughs> decibel per watt meter that's like a huge jump and that's because 
the motor has been tremendously beefed up to almost uh, 1.5 Tesla, to almost 15 kilogauss, and, and, and that's because the magnet is almost doubled uh, with the same diameter voice coil. And that allows, uh, it, it's still specified to go to 20 hertz, but the, the highest SPR you can get is you can get at full power almost 120 dB out of it. So here, let's let's stop here uh, by with with the woofers, and next time let's go and have a look at the compression driver. So please give a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Thank you. Bye. -bye.